Good evening. All right. So today we are having a uh, quite controversial subject, right? I've uh, I've been working on a blog post, and the season is upon us. And there's a lot of activity in the group that I'm running, and there's this subject has been on my mind quite a lot. And because of that, I've been thinking about things from my past that have been kind of bubbling to get out. So before we get into this subject of magic mushrooms, which is a very misunderstood subject, in my personal opinion, we have to do a little disclaimer. I need to have this running under here because there's going to be a lot of people with questions and there's going to be a lot of people coming in for the wrong reasons. And there's going to be a lot of people having different opinions regarding this. There's a lot of things that is um, that could go wrong while talking about this. So first, let's talk about my personal opinion on magic mushrooms, which is like magic mushrooms. It has kind of a, a duality in itself, like the, the meaning of the word. Some people hear this and it's like, <gasps> trippers those drug addicts, those hippies, all that stuff, right? For me, I view them as a sacred medicine. And after I got into it, my world changed. I also read up on a different... I got into a different kind of lane within the knowledge, within the, the search of knowledge after I got into this. Because I thought it was just a way of getting high, right? The reason I got into it in the first place is because I wanted to get more into the meditation. I wanted to get more immersed. Something of, um, how do I articulate this? <laughs> I don't think it's possible. You know, there's a guy called Ram Dass. He's unfortunately passed away now, but he said that for those who've had the experience, no explanation is necessary. But for those who have not had the experience, no explanation is possible. So trying to explain the experience in itself is not going to be very easy, and I don't think I'm going to even attempt to do so. But for me, it changed my life because it opened doors, which is what I want to talk to you about today. Because I wrote this post on the blog. Well, it's not actually posted yet. Teaser, you're just the, you're the first person who knows that there's a post coming and it's uh, I'm trying to get into the depths of it. It's a very special topic for me because it opened the door for love, which sounds so cliche in many ways, but it did. I'm just going to see if I can do this. There we go. I start to see love in a different light. Um... After I got into the meditation and I started to see the effects that this had on the meditation, which is something I just called Myco meditation, I saw that love is not what I always thought it was. Love was more of a force of nature, a cosmic force for good, a power in itself. Which brings us into trying to define love, but not let's not do that right now. Um... I felt it on my body. I felt the frequency of it. And I felt that I was immersed in it. I could see that everything that I did in life had some aspect of love in it. And so I started to see things differently. I started to love people differently. I started to see enemies differently. You know, I started to forgive people. I started to see the the magic of the world differently. And this is not just during the experience. This is actually after this was a neurological change in my brain after I've had the experience, which was, to me, inexplicable. I could not fathom what I had tapped into, and I could not fathom why it had the rumor or the, the associations that it did. So I want to try to explain that as well as I can right now for you, but... It's going to be hard, so just um, bear with me, all right? I read this book called Brian Murarescu. Oh, by Brian Murarescu. 
called the Immortality Key, the secret religion with no name, or the hidden religion with no name. Search for Brian and Rescue in the Immortality Key, and you're going to see something amazing. <clears throat> all right, we already have a few people in here who I know have a little experience with this topic. In that book, I saw that psychedelics, uh, in specifically ergot, which is a bread mold, had been used in different topics or different tonics, drinks and beverages to use for the elite, mostly. It started in the Illusion Mysteries, and if you haven't heard of those, I strongly recommend you check that out. If you haven't read the book, I strongly recommend you check that out. There should be a link, but I will not do that right now. Head over to the fmlproject.com. Under resources, you're going to find that book. It changed my life. The Illusion Mysteries was basically a ceremony for the elites. And they were having these ceremonies in the dark of night, where they went over there to die before they died so that they could live forever. And for those who've had the experience, that makes sense. Because there's a phenomena called ego death. When you have the ego death, it's a liberating state of awareness almost. It's like when you have no... You have no, nothing ruining you, if that makes sense. It's like if you people start to offend you, people attack you verbally, if they start to abuse you verbally, if they start to just throw insults in your face, if they start to comment on things that really you know that they don't have any clue on, instead of getting angry, you're seeing them as just on a different part of the journey. You see them in the light of forgiveness. You see them with the perspective of love, right? You will not feel as if you need to explain yourself to increase your status, if that makes sense. I'm going to say that sentence a lot of times, if that makes sense. Because, or that phrase, because you won't have anything from within you trying to justify, trying to defend, trying to make light of something that other people can't understand, where you feel, well, quite literally offended. And right now, I think the world would be in need of an ego death. I think this is also something that could be achieved through meditation. But the biggest, biggest result that I had was the ego death. And I, it happened incrementally. I did not know that it had happened until I realized that I was not being angry for the reasons that I used to be angry about. I saw things differently. I, I was like, accepting, accepting. I saw people as people as the same as me, as just a part of the bigger cosmological piece. You know, it's... it's. Ram Dass was really onto something when he said that, for those who've had the experience. But I started this because of the meditation. And when I saw that it had these capabilities of promoting neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, neuro, um, which is... I believe I've talked about this before on the stream, where you have new neurons forming in your brain, or you can change neurons forming in your brain. So if you have habits, you can change those more easily with neurogenesis. You can change them with neurogenesis more easily with magic mushrooms. Disclaimer again, I do not promote or advise you to take these substances. You do not, I do not recommend you try these things just because you want to try to change anything in your life because you really need to understand your brain before you even start this. This is like trying to toss gas on a fire without really understanding the fire before you're going to burn down the freaking place, right? There's people who have been met. People have not been coming down from the trip allegedly, where they have never really found their themselves again. They're always walking around in this constant experience, right? In my personal opinion, I think that some people might be subjected to having these adverse results where they could be 
worsening a condition, right? Where they, they could all of a sudden see something in their brain that they really did not want to see. And because they didn't have the knowledge on how to deal with it, they could have just messed everything up. So knowing about your own mind, knowing about how you act, how your mind operates, is a very good um, advice. It's a very good thing to have in your tool belt before you even start to consider these things. Because these are powerful, powerful transformational tools. Most important to study it before try it. Yes. See, I found this because I was doing the meditation and I researched the heck out of it. Before I even, before I even ingested it, I knew everything about them. Well, that is an overstatement because I, I'm still learning so much about mushrooms, about nature, about everything that it is. But I knew these concepts that is normally just used in science. Rhizomorphic. I knew about the, the compounds within them. I knew about as much as I could un until I really understood what I was dealing with. And then when I get in, I had the familiar experience without even having the experience beforehand. So I had really studied it. Study the heck out of it. Never do it alone. Don't do it just because you think it's a magic pill. Don't do it because you think that this is going to change everything in your life if you just do it. You might feel love. You might feel like something has shifted. You might see the world differently. But you also might fuck up your life beyond recognition. Because you need to know what you're doing. So, neuroplasticity. It promotes communication in your brain. Right? I should have had a graphic on the screen right now. But picture a ball with a string. Now, in your brain your different areas will communicate with those respective areas. So your eyes will communicate with your everything that is associated with your eyes and your sight. Your ears in the same way. Everything that is associated with hearing, the same, right? You will hear within the category. See, feel, taste, all that stuff within the respective categories. On psilocybin, on psychedelics, you won't. You will have every part of your brain communicating with every other part of your brain. And it's like that ball of string is now, instead of just having a few strings connecting their respective categories, you have strings connected to every freaking category. So you are just seeing blue, but you're also tasting blue and wondering why it smells so good, right? It's not really easy to understand, but... The thing is, when this happens, it is a neurotoxin. It is affecting your brain in a way where it is actually changing the way you're viewing reality. And we could go into a lot of different explanation as to how this is compared to a lot of other drugs, but I won't. <laughs> because why? You know, but let's just say it like this. I hate alcohol because alcohol is destructive. As alcohol will degrade your brain. I very rarely drink, and when I do, I really try to be aware of how much I drink. Because alcohol will kill your brain cells. While psilocybin and psychedelics will just put, your, put you into a different state of mind. Put you into a more connected state of consciousness, where you can actually feel and taste and touch and operate frequencies. And this is where it got really interesting for me, because I was... During an experience in 2018, I saw things differently and I wanted to see more of it. And I started to explain or I started to research the eighth dimension. The eighth dimension is basically where the frequencies lie. It is the land of vibration, right? I heard a frequency that I could not really pinpoint. So I heard, I listened for more frequencies. It turned out that I was hearing the, the river, and then I was hearing the wind, and then I was hearing the grass from the wind, and then I could hear my own heart, and then I could hear all these different things going on. Hold on. Especially if you have any medical conditions as well. Yes. If you have medical conditions, you should be really aware. Do your research. Sorry for reading the chat as I'm doing this. I could hear all these different frequencies, and I wanted to see what I could do with them. So as I heard my heart, I could actually elevate that frequency to match that of the wind. 
and all of a sudden I could hear harmonies that I'd never heard before. But what really tripped me up was that I could hear people around me as they approached me and as they went away. I could hear this... Right? It was weird. And I didn't know until after that this was actually the frequencies of, of different people. And then I got pulled out of the experience because I could hear that all familiar sound when you get a message, when something of a signal enters your phone and you're close to a loudspeaker, right? We can hear this dit 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 and I, I was, I just thought I was tripping. Well, I was, right? But that told me that I was actually hearing the frequencies that I normally cannot hear. So I started to research more. And as I researched more, I realized that I had just opened a few doors because these things could be done in meditation as well. This is where it really got to the next level for me because after that, I started to experience new things. And when you experience something that you can actually feel, something that is tangible, that is on your body, you have problems trying to not recognize it, right? You can't forget it because it has actually happened and you could feel it. So in trying to figure this out, I got into astral projection. I got into ESP, you know, um, extrasensory projection, where you can actually see remote view shit, which is weird. Now, right now we have been, uh, well, not right now. It's actually a few months ago, but, or weeks ago. I'm, I'm not sure. Time is relative. But we tried to do this with a friend of mine in, uh, in the U.S. And he's also into this ESP. And he was mapping out my property without even seeing it, without ever being here. And he could see things. And after I went through that experience, I had an easier way of doing it. I could visualize better because my creativity was skyrocketing. I could remote heal. Now, I, the reason I say that is because, first of all, I don't have the side effects of my blood clot anymore. That is not because of psychedelics, but it is because of what psychedelics introduced me to. I started to have neuroplasticity going on all the time when I was studying quantum physics and epigenetics. And as I understood epigenetics more, I started to imply, implement these things in my life. And all of a sudden I could visualize and I could start to see changes in my body and I could understand the concepts. And all of a sudden I had healed my blood clot. Now, I also tried to remove it completely, but that is a, that's a story in it by itself. After that, I tried to remote heal. And it enabled me to, I guess, do some changes in some people. Because the day after, after not hearing from these people in months, they sent me a message saying that they thought about me. And I'm saying, how is your health? What is going on? And they said that they had some pain in the left area of their stomach. I was like, interesting. How is that now? Well, it was bad for a few weeks, but now it started to improve. And that's really interesting because in my stuff, I had seen their, their bodies and scanned and seen this red blob in the left region of the stomach. So I was fascinated. I was completely fascinated. And the more I studied about my magic mushrooms, about everything quantum, everything meditation, everything frequency and vibration, the more I start to see the world differently. There is so much to unpack on this that it, I would have a hard time doing it. But I'm a very, very strong advocate for this being a regulated medicine for people with PTSD, anxiety, depression, with just a self love issue where they don't love themselves enough or they have a deficiency in their love for oneself or others empathy all of these things that most people probably don't think about i'm going to say that because i've had so many discussions and conversations about this where people will say that they love themselves and i did too but it turns out that you have love, but more for other people than yourself. Like having the intellectual knowledge that one should love yourself and saying that you love yourself in the mirror sometimes isn't enough. Because I've had these 
talks where people didn't realize that they actually did not love themselves. But when you have seen love, literally, in vibrational form, or felt it embrace you and take you away, something shifts. Either, even though I had been through this, I did not see that it wasn't apply, uh, applied to me, if that makes sense. I saw the love. I had a lot of love, but it wasn't for me. So after I got into this, seeing that I was actually not loving myself, I started to really meditate during an experience on that love and in installing it almost in myself. And all of a sudden, my life was changed again. And every time I need to do something, I can use these principles, these doors that psychedelics or magic mushrooms gave me and see things differently and go through them easily, transcend them more. But it sounds like I'm promoting again. I'm not. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do psychedelics if you don't know what you're doing. If you want to know more about what it could be like, if you see that, all right, I have some issues that I want to deal with. I would strongly recommend you start researching. And as you're doing that, start meditating with these concepts in mind. Trying to really visualize love and seeing the frequencies and stuff. If you haven't already, create a free account on thefmlproject.com and get access to the free 21-minute visual guided meditation. Visual? It's not visual. I don't know why I said that. Probably because... It's like a trip. It's like a psychedelic trip without the trip, without the psychedelics. Because I think that everyone should have the knowledge to responsibly use these things, but also have the knowledge to use the principles that comes with them without the use or the need of psychedelic substances. It is truly life transformational. Now, regarding the legality, which is something that is really weird. You see, in the book that I mentioned before from Brian Murrescu, Immortality Key, he follows the story from psychedelics in historical context. And he sees that the church, Christianity, has been actively trying to eradicate psychedelics for all time. Since they began, they have archives saying that they have tried to wipe it out to take down people who's using these things and remove it from the face of the earth. Actually, the communion, the Christian communion, is a result of that ceremony in the Illusion Mysteries. That wine used to be psychedelic. There is archaeochemical evidence that points that ergot was used and mixed by the women, creating these things that was used in the ceremonies in Christianity. We've always seen the power of these things, and we've always had people trying to mask it, to cover it up, to feed it with propaganda and negative associations, and trying to make people scared of it. And they should be scared of it. They should respect the hell out of it. Because these things, they grow in your front yard, and they're able to communicate with the universe, quite literally, it can change your entire existence. And it's being told that you can't do anything about that because some people see the power or the challenge of having a whole lot of people thinking this way. Think about that. If you have an army of people thinking freely, wanting change for justice and liberty, you don't want to promote that thing that could actually make that happen if you want to stay in power. You know what I mean? <clears throat> this is why I've been really reluctant of sharing anything about this topic because the more people that speaks up about truth, the more shit seems to happen. They could get banned. They could get taken off platforms. They could, well, quite literally, some people have just been taken off the face of the earth if they were aggressive enough. And just today, just today, I posted a post on Facebook mentioning some of these controversial things that we have going on right now in the world. And within seconds, I had an alert from Facebook 
saying that this was flagged, which is interesting because I think that right now we are on the verge of a huge, huge change. And I think that Magic Mushrooms is going to be a very big propellant in that. I think that if people knew the power of these things and didn't use it for party drugs, they could actually achieve something more in life than they could possibly imagine. They could do whatever the fuck they wanted. Again, not promoting it, but you should definitely start researching it if you haven't. If you want to research it, I do believe that I have a, uh, a little pamphlet on the FML project. And if you go to the fmlproject.com slash LOA, you can see the exact principles that I used because of these things that enabled me to see love and frequencies and vibrations and electromagnetic forces in a completely different way where I could actually communicate with these vib vibrational forces. Forces and there's, there's a lot of repeat words here trying to articulate something that is kind, kind of hard to articulate. Art, 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 art. But I can honestly say that if it wasn't for these things, these little magical things, I would not be where I'm at today. I wouldn't have any interest in trying to meditate. I wouldn't have any interest in trying to understand quantum physics. I would not know what my mind was capable of, and I would not know what love truly is. Because as I mentioned in that little pamphlet that I mentioned, love is a power. And when you can amplify, amplify the power, you can actually create your dream reality. And when you can do that, you, it's hard to explain how you can expect or what you can expect because I've been baffled more times than I can count. The reason that I'm actually sharing this right now is because some things have happened lately. Right after I started to think about this again, right on the verge of the season, something is happening again. Magic is happening all the time. It's interesting. Now, if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask them in chat. Because there's a lot of people who don't know exactly what to do, but then again, there's a limited... It's limited what I can do in a live stream, but if you have questions, I'm about to create resources on this topic within the different community that I'm talking about, and also within the FML project, because I 100% believe that people should know about what this is and what they are capable of doing with this information it could completely change your life now today my son is actually six years old six years old he's about to start school i'm kind of blown away how fast time went how fast time goes because in 2015 i was still unambitious i was still not doing anything and as I got him, as he entered my life, I started this path. And that's also why I've been thinking about this today. Because as I started the path, I was searching the wrong things. I was searching the egocentric, materialistic things. Right? I was looking at, at things that could further em enrich myself. For myself. Not with any other intention in mind. Maybe so that I could give my son the future that he deserved. But the future that he deserved was something that I didn't have. You know, this is a big thing that we're going through right now. I wanted to give him what I didn't have. But the thing is, when I was little, a lot of the things that I didn't have that I wanted to give him didn't exist. So it's kind of hard to give him something that it really didn't exist, right? But I was doing this for materialistic reasons. As I evolved, as I continued on the journey and as he grew you know when he was three years old 2018 when I had that psychedelic experience I went from the materialistic and the egocentric to all of a sudden seeing how I could be of benefit to a lot of people to try to actually serve people because I knew stuff I knew how to help people with graphic design right it's not big I knew how to help people with graphic design and web design so I started to help people because of this psychedelic experience. And as that evolved, I started to see that he has exactly what he needs. He has the love. He has the gratitude of his parents. 
he has the people looking out for him to try to make him the best version of himself that he could be instead of trying to force whatever view that I had of his future on him. And so now I see that he's about to start school. And because of this little magic plant or fruit or mushroom, he is about to enter a whole realm of possibilities compared to what would happen if I was just to say, you should do this because this is where you'll be happy. This is where you will be happy. Listen to that, right? Back then I was so, so stubborn and seeing that he actually had a life of his own, almost, if that makes sense. I wanted him to have the best life. I wanted that from my perspective of my current worldview. And today it's completely opposite. Today he is the one teaching me. Today he is the one basically showing me what it is like to be a child in a world filled with love and appreciation and gratitude. And this would not have happened without this magical little thing. So, it just blew my mind today that I'm actually about to have a school kid. Time flies. Which also kind of scares me a little bit because in 2018, it's three years ago, and everything has changed in three years. Most noticeably in two years. And it's still changing. And with this, there's only possibilities. There's no challenges. There's no setbacks. There's no failures. There's only transcendence and lessons learned and trying to grow and develop and becoming that next version and iteration of myself to try to be that best father that I could be for my kids, which is the whole point as to why I'm doing this at all. I became a better parent because of this magic little thing. I started to see the world through their eyes. I started to see the awe of these new things. Becoming the child again. Playing with them again. Having fun again. And seeing what would, we, what would be possible. Or what would happen. If you were to do stupid shit. I can't come up with an example right now. But I just remind myself. Like Raymond. You're in the chat right now. You're watching this. Raymond is a guy from the tribe. And he. I love this dude. He's on a, an amazing journey of himself. And he came to visit. And on his visit, he took us to the trampoline park here in this district. In the district. In the trampoline park, I played with my daughter. And she got a really... She, she got the hang of this. She wanted to go back. Now, for my son's birthday, we went back. And... I did it again. I started to experiment as if I was a kid. This time, Raymond, if you were there, you would be... I'm not sure. I think you would be scared if you saw what happened. We were kids together, right? A kid broke her arm, as far as I was told yesterday. I actually sliced up my finger everywhere. My my daughter was filled with blood. She was bloodied like hell. My My son, he was basically knocked out by my knee as we were tarsening our way through a ninja course. It was mayhem. Everything went well. Everything went well. It was all part of the game. Although, when we have these games, sometimes shit happened. And it's one of those memories that I will never forget. And it's because of that childish thing that I got from the magic mushrooms. I was watching my brother as he was sitting there and he wasn't really partaking in the games because he was an adult. I was watching all the other adults not partaking. And they were also, they looked very bored, right? I also know that they were probably not really remembering these days as they should have. But because we actually entered that frame of mind of a child, I'm never going to forget that day. And I don't think my kids are going to forget it either. And now they know that their dad is basically as much a kid as they are. And they have this picture of their own in their minds that they're probably going to go back to when they get old and I I'm just I'm, I'm beyond grateful for everything that's happening and it's all because of love 
is weird because everything that I talk about in my life today is as it is, as a side effect of the experience in 2018. It opened every door in my life. I'm in the best health that I've ever been, although my right buttocks is kind of messed up. I don't know why I did something. I probably strained something, but I'm in my best shape ever. I'm reading. I have found a love for reading. I'm loving the journey of personal development. I love everything around me, and I have this deep empathy for people that I didn't have before. And I see patterns in things that I never did before. And this is after the experience. This is something that happened because of the experience with neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. But it is persisting after. I feel like I'm incapable of being depressed. I'm incapable of having anxiety attacks. If I have, which happened quite a lot, I can transcend them easily. Because I have a different perspective of the world. Because of psychedelics that I do not promote. It is amazing. So now I've rambled on for 40 minutes. And I could probably talk for five days on this. Well, that is an overstatement. I could talk for a long time about this because everything in my life has changed because of these things. So if you have any questions, ask them. If you have any things that you want to learn about this, tell me. Send me a message. Send me an email. Tor at thefmlproject.com I'm going to make that post and if I see things that could actually be added to a post or a topic of whatever, I will add them because I'm trying to now organize my thoughts in a better way to be more efficient so that I can actually have these resource vaults so that I can actually help people if they have questions. It's a lot easier to just give them a resource that you've created and then just answering the blanks if they have any more questions than to go through the entire process every single time. If you have any questions, ask them. Feel free to reach out and we'll talk about it. And that's it. That was 40 minutes. I told myself I was going to just do 30 minutes, but when I'm talking about my passions, I can't help myself. I hope that you're having a fantastic day, and if you don't know that there's always a choice, you can always change that narrative. If you go into personal development, meditation, I'm not going to say that you can do anything of... You know? I hate everything being so controversial, but I think we're closing in on something of a change globally. Hopefully. Who knows? We're just going to have to stay in hope. Love your face. Have a fantastic day. And take care of your freaking family. Peace.